Hello, this is Todd Martin from Solid Shell Security, and I'm back with another Python programming video. Um, actually, in this uh, Python video I made, where I'm doing Python, and I'm showing you guys two little programs that I did where I was just growing around with some math with the Fibonacci sequence and some other mathematical uh, equation that I got from uh, eRuler or designed for eRuler. I had a user ask about. Um, doing some stuff with math like uh, helpful integers like uh, power and stuff along that lines um, for this first of all if you guys don't know if I haven't covered it just in case let me actually close out of this and start up again go into your uh, terminal or in your Python shell and do help with parentheses actually screwed that up First, go into the Python shell, type in help. Check something real quick. See if I can make this bigger so that way you guys can see what's going on. Type in help and then type in modules. And it's going to gather a list of modules, or in other videos, I call them libraries. Um, they're kind of interchangeable. I usually use the word libraries instead of modules myself. But ultimately, it doesn't matter. If you're talking to a Python programmer, they'll pretty much get what you're getting at. So they're the same thing. But this is going to give you a list of all of the libraries or modules you have in Python, such as... Uh, See, one that we played around with in the videos that I have shown is socket. So socket is listed here. But to do mathematical functions, a lot of them, we're going to need the math, which is right here. And there's also some other ones. And if we want to learn about the math module or math library, we can simply Google Python math, such as I did before this video and should be the first link and it should automatically pull up your Python version number up here if not you can click and it'll switch to the correct one uh, if you've been following my videos you should have Python 2.7.3 instead of 3.2, 2.6, 3.3 or 3.4 so let's take a look at this um, the math module is pretty straightforward you can kind of read and get what's going on here let me clear this out Let's open up a new shell and see if I can also make the text bigger for you guys Actually, I should do this out of my terminal just because it'll be easier. It'll be the same thing. Let's make it bigger. Alright, that should make it a little bit more easy readable. You can do import math. And I'm just going to show as an example and not really explain it right at this second. I believe it's fabs yeah which gives the absolute value but the problem with just doing import math or at, at least with me for you guys it may be different you have to do that math dot then fabs whereas if you do from math import it automatically imports everything so I can do negative 10 so the fabs fabs is the absolute value as you can see. Um, you can also do uh, factorial, uh, fsum, pretty much gives a, a very direct definition of what exactly it does. You can also do uh, logarithms out of this. 
which is really really helpful if you're in like a advanced functions class or like an algebra 2 class or if you're doing any kind of trig like pre-cal or calculus and you don't have a graphing calculator or anything and you don't really have the money to go spend on one programming is a really good way of doing this however I would suggest looking into Octave especially if you want to get into designing like algorithms like uh, for instance games um, take Call of Duty Black Ops or actually I'll use Battlefield because Battlefield is much more realistic with its physics settings um, the trajectory of a bullet and how far the bullet goes like if you guys have ever played Battlefield 3 you guys notice whenever you shoot a sniper rifle that the bullet does curve down after so many feet um, it's all math based it's all a mathematical algorithm depending on the gun and taken into dirt certain variables it gives those certain outcomes with octave if you want to get into doing advanced stuff like that i would suggest doing octave which is a lot like python except the syntax is a little bit different but it's an interpreted language but its whole purpose is for designing algorithms for purposes such as that whereas Python's kind of very generalized I mean you can get into doing stuff like that but with Octave it's a little bit easier and instead of having to fumble around with libraries most of that stuff in Octave is already built in so that way you don't need it so how about this uh, power what if we want to do a power the first number uh, as you guys know like power we can do 10 to the second power so our base number is going to be first then our exponent is going to be the next number and that gives us 100 so 10 to the second power is 100 you can do 100 to the fifth power uh, square root which is SQRT fairly simple and you can do a lot of trick stuff with the uh, with the Python math library you really shouldn't need any library if you're doing like basic calculus stuff um, gamma and of course it's already got pi and e So if you're trying to figure out the circumference of something, and uh, well, I felt really stupid for having to look this up. But then again, it's been a while since I've had to do it. I just wanted the circumference. I didn't want to. Didn't want all the tangent and arcs and stuff. That's too much of a headache for me right now. All right, so it's pi times diameter. So let's say you're doing it, you know, for class, you got homework and you need the circumference of a circle. And we know the circumference of the circle is diameter. And for this, we're going to just use D short for diameter. Or actually, let's go ahead and type it out. Diameter equals 10. And you need to find out what is the circumference if the diameter is 10. You can do circumference equals pi times diameter print circumference and there you go there would be the circumference although usually for at least in like high school they tell you not to use the whole pi they usually tell you or at least in my experience um, to just use 3.14 and you can also do that too. C equals pi times 10 print C. Right there. So those would be constants that are already available, built in. Um, there's also other things. 
Uh, there's other ones such as uh, CMath. Uh, CMath kind of has along the lines of the same thing. Um, there's other ones out there such as I have some. For these, you actually have to import yourself or set up yourself. Which, if I haven't shown how to install a new module inside of uh, Python, you guys should let me know so that I can do a video because that's very, very important. Excuse me while this is generated. I know I have a few that I installed myself. I got a nice long list of them. I know SciPy does some math stuff. Which I've shown you guys before with the linear regression. I haven't really showed you the library, but I've showed a program where I used SciPy before. Um, there should also be an algorithm, one that's automatically built in. But that's probably a little bit more complex. Let's take a look at that. Oh, so I thought there was an algorithm library built in. Guess not. Um, I think I just saw another one. NumPy numbers might be one also. So there's some different ones. If it's already built in, like if you have a fresh install, you haven't installed any modules, um, you can just take the name like syslog, and it should come up. And you can just kind of read through the documentation. Uh, some of these are a little bit complex and hard to read and very hard to understand if you don't know certain things about Python. Um, but like some of your math ones are very, very straightforward. So I think that kind of covers it for this video. I just kind of showed you guys how to find some uh, stuff for math in there. Um, in case you guys don't know, I should probably show this too. Um, as far as mathematical operators go, your plus sign is add, uh, hyphen is subtract, that is divide, which is a forward slash, and to multiply is an asterisk, so print 6 divided by 2, print 10 times 3, I don't think it'll do this though. Nope, it won't. We could do 3 times 10. Do print 3 times the power of 2 to the fourth. So it's pretty straightforward, not entirely too complex. Uh, it does. I'm not 100% sure it should follow orders of operations, but sometimes uh, Python gets a little bit confused with orders of operations. So if, let's say you're like a high schooler and you know you're doing those board introductory things, like you're going in, like you're going into pre-cal, but for some reason your teacher feels the need to go over order of operations, even though you've done it every year since you were in eighth grade. Um, so you got like three plus.
plus 5 times 6 divided by 2 or something like that. It's best to probably put it in one at a time. So do like print 6 divided by 2, 5 times 3. Print 15 plus 2. There's your answer. So, so if you're going along those lines, it's probably best to do it one line at a time. Um, I think that kind of covers it. You guys can go look at the library. Once again, it should be very, very straightforward. Uh, it's an easy library to learn. Not really a whole lot you can do with it unless you just need it to help you on math homework. That's probably the biggest help that it's going to have. So, uh, that's it for this video.